What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Gaming with the Bros Cast, episode 177. Nick, we are uh, we're going to do a little bit of a rebrand here. We are gaming with the X Bros Cast. Uh, oh, yeah, we're, we're no longer bros anymore. We're X Bros. It's just it's just I how. X bro now. <laughs> You're an X Bro. You're an X Bro. Oh goodness. <laughs> Actually, let's not. It's not Game with the X's. Game with the X's. <laughs> my name is Harrison. I am joined by my uh, not X, but my actual brother, uh, Nick. How are you doing, buddy? Good, man. Feeling feeling pretty good on this Monday. You know, got a had, had a great a great weekend full of new releases. Yeah. So it's it's it a good time. Yeah, it's it's been a good week. Pick. We'll, we'll talk about it here in a little bit, but yeah, Pikmin dropped on Friday. You you got some swag stuff. I mean. Oh, I got the, I had some some major swag that I ordered <laughs> a few months ago. So very excited about that. Sweet. Can see it on my camera, but no, you can't see it. Yeah, I don't think you can. So I've got it. I've got it up top. But, but yeah, let's 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 dive into what what kind of uh, what kind of swag did you get this week? All right. So first thing that came in was my Celeste. Here, I'll I'll, I'll grab the uh, I'll just grab the case. Yeah, we got the, and this is just the, the case for it. But the Celeste, nice. I just, I just held it up to my microphone like an idiot. Uh, the <laughs> Celeste special edition came in. Sweet. It's pretty sick. Um, now, have they have they ever done a physical edition for Celeste? I I'm, I'm sure they have. I just happened to kind of catch this one. Okay. Um, yeah, but this one had, I think it had like an art book and a journal. Some other stuff. Uh, it's pretty cool. I mean, nothing crazy. Yeah. I feel like all the special editions these days are like very like run in the mill almost. <laughs> yeah. Get your art book. You get a little little something else. But yeah, unless you get like a steel book. Yeah. Steel books are always nice. Yeah. Uh, it, but I mean, generally speaking, I mean, they're usually 60, 70 bucks for these collector's editions versus, you know, so anything with like a statue these days is going to be upwards of at least 200 bucks. Yeah. But. Um, and then I don't have it on me, but I have the, the Pyra and Mithra. And yes. The, yep. I picked that. That came in as well. Yep. I picked that up on uh, at Best Buy on Friday when I picked up Pikmin and I got a little uh, free tote bag as well. Pretty excited about it. Yeah. Is it so. a is it a Pyra and Mithra tote bag or is it a Pikmin Ford? No, it's a uh, it's a pick. It's a yeah, I got it right here. Little tote bag, little toady yodi. I like it. I like it. Gonna carry some stuff. Carry all those Pikmin around. Yeah, little pre-order bonus for uh, pre-ordering at Best Buy. It was either that or like I think the water bottle was at Walmart or Target. I was like, I don't need another water bottle. Yeah. I also don't need a tote bag, but <laughs> hey, you you can always use another tote bag. That is that is true. That is true. Yeah. Well, sweet. Any any other swag did you get this weekend? Um, not gaming related, but I got Lydia's, uh, it's, a, it's a band that got their, one of their first albums, Illuminate, on vinyl. Oh, okay, so I, okay, I thought, I thought, I saw you post the tweet, I thought that maybe had came with the Celeste, I thought that was a Celeste yeah, soundtrack. No, no, no. Okay. Yeah, separate, separate thing, but, um. Cool. Yeah, I ordered all these things in, like, February or March. Oh, wow. Year, and, Just, and okay, all, all came at the same time? time. <laughs> yeah, the same week, which is cool. Nice. Yeah, that's 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 all my swag I got this week. This Sweet. Heck yeah. Um, Harrison, shall we shall we dive into our weekends? Because I'm I, I'm pretty excited to talk about. Yeah, you you took the challenge. I took the challenge. I I, I survived Barbenheimer 2023. Um, all, right, all right. So so sell me on because I, honestly I don't think I've seen. I've seen clips and like just random like 20 second ads for Barbie and really the same with Oppenheimer. I haven't really seen much mm -hmm. on it other than like. When I, I don't know when. um Oh, gosh. Uh, was it was it Benjamin? No, it was uh not Benjamin Franklin. Who was it? Einstein. Einstein. He popped up on the screen and it, all the all the people were like make it like cheering and, and screaming. And I was like, this is not like a Marvel cameo. This is a, yeah. a real person <laughs> like in a. <laughs> Anyways, but 
No, that 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 did not happen in my theater. No one cheered when Einstein came on the screen. There, luckily, there was no, there was no like cheering or or weirdness for for Oppenheimer. Barbara yeah. just had laughs. Which yeah, I, I wouldn't think that Oppenheimer would have. Like, I think that was just like the the a few random people that saw the trailer, like, oh my god, oh my god, Albert Einstein's. <sighs> Anyways, and I saw like the 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 memes of like you know when Marvel movies end, it's like. So and so will be returning. Yeah, like Oppenheimer will be returning. <laughs> <laughs> that was that was not not in the movie, but um. Well, that's good. Okay, so, to, to sell you on Oppenheimer, okay. Um, it's a three-hour biopic about Robert Oppenheimer, who was the creator of the atomic bomb, and the movie kind of goes progresses throughout his life and you kind of see how he gets to where he ends up being, which is the kind of the head of the Trinity test, which is the the test for the, the first atomic bombs. And, you know, the, they made the bombs that, that were dropped on uh, Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Yeah. So that's like a heavy, heavy, heavily featured point of that movie is just like getting up to that point and then kind of seeing seeing like the the desolation of what mankind can create yeah and kind of the effects of that on 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 the future of, of society so it kind of it kind of like delves into that and um i don't know it's it's really hard to it's really hard to sell this movie because it's not an action movie it's it's very like serious and and very thought-provoking but it's really engaging and, and and even though it's a three hour runtime, it's it's very quick. Yeah. It's like it, it quickly like goes through all of Oppenheimer's life from, from college until, you know, late in his life. And every actor, every actress in the movie is phenomenal. Cillian Murphy is fantastic. Robert Downey Jr. is incredible. I mean every, every like every everyone Yeah, it's got a it's got a ton of like even Josh Beck is in there. Yeah, movie, like, it's got it's got a ton of actors in there. Just a ton of yeah, yeah, yeah. They, yeah, they all, they I want to see it. Screen time, but how, how does this? I mean, cause this this is Christopher Nolan's like first movie based on a true story, right? Uh, I, th I think so. Because he had what he had like what I mean he had the. Her? Dunkirk. Okay, that's right. He had, he did do Dunkirk. I haven't seen that movie either. Um, that one was really good. But that, that's the one with like that that really awesome. I see it all the time. But like the the end, like the the shot where the guy is running across the land and he trips a couple of times, and that's not like it wasn't scripted, but they kept it in because it just it's believable. Um, I mean, but yeah, I mean, the Dark Knight trilogy, fantastic. Um, have you ever have you ever seen Memento? Yeah, yeah, it's a great movie. It's a great movie. Um, what what else did he do? He did. Oh, he did Interstellar, Inception. Inception, that, in, yeah, Inception, and then did didn't he do? I always forget the two, or, or I, I can't ever remember the two because it's it's two like magic movies that came out during the same time. Did he do one of those? Yeah, I think it was the Prestige. The Prestige, yeah. Yeah. Something. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think those are the Prestige. So he's a, he's a good he's a good track record. Yeah. So I was really excited for this. Yeah, he's he's one of my like if he's if he's the director on a movie, it's you know it's going to be yeah, really so good. So Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, it's, I want to see it. Phenomenal movie, but you just leave the movie feeling like super down and kind of hopeless a little bit. So So you, but you saw did you see Barbie first or Oppenheimer first? No, we saw Oppenheimer first and Good move. We went, to, we went to lunch afterwards and Alicia was like, I don't think we made the right decision. I think we we should have seen Barbie first. It would have been really light and then we could have gone into Oppenheimer with a with a good mood. And I was like, I don't know. Like I want to hold out until I've until I've seen Barbie to to make a decision. But I was like, you might be right. Like we might have done the order wrong. And then and then we went to Barbie. And everything just immediately turned around once yeah. you see all the pink on the screen and and see uh, Ryan Gosling's character. He well, he plays Ken, but seeing him play Ken is just so hilarious. So is it 
again, I, I have I don't know anything about this movie. Um, is it like is it a toy come to life scenario or is it just Barbie is a real person? It's it's like a fish out of water where you were. OK, it, it starts in Barbie land and she ends up in. America. OK, so she's it's a toy, toy to life situation. I, I didn't know if they were going to do that route or if she was just some rando named Barbie and, you know, that's yeah, cool. Like, yeah. So they have like the pink, like the all pink Barbie land. And yeah, you know, the, the, the Barbies kind of rule it. And the Kins kind of just exist there as like a kind of like a almost like a side story. And every night's girls night and all that, all that kind of stuff. And, <laughs> and then they get to America and, and and Ken and Barbie both realize that everything's kind of backwards. Yeah. In America where it's like it's like ruled by men and like all this stuff. So Ken like loves it and and. I don't want to spoil it too much, but yeah, but that sounds pretty funny. Okay, that, that, I, I didn't know if they were going to do that route, like Toys to Life kind of thing. So that that's cool. Yeah, yeah, and that's pretty cool. It's got like it's it's a PG PG thirteen movie, so it's not like a four kids movie necessarily. It's got yeah, some pretty uh, pr- pretty good jokes in there, and that's cool. Kind of pretty good topical stuff. Well, the Barbenheimer man, dude, two great movies on the same. We we, we don't get stuff too often like this with with. No. What was it? Twenty twenty with with Doom and, and Animal Crossing. Yeah. I mean, we don't just get two things that are the complete opposite ends of the spectrum like this. That are and we probably do, and we just don't realize of it as you know much popularity as these have. So, well, I'm glad both of them are were good. Yeah, they were great, and um, we saw a lot of Barbenheimer shirts. Really? The theater, we, yeah. Wow. Like, the theaters were completely packed, like even for the 11 a.m. movie. I, I wonder I wonder if like if these movies were to release on separate times, I wonder if they wouldn't because they both did pretty well at the box office. I wonder if they would not have done as well, because I think so many people were just wanted to be part of that zeitgeist of the Barbenheimer, you know, release release weekend. I don't know. I, th- I think Barbie still would have done well because. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure it would have. It has really good brand recognition, yeah. but but I feel like Oppenheimer was was brought up by barbie a little okay. bit just like it just happened to work out where two very barbie different movies released on the same day and yeah and it's not like a converging audience situation where you're where you're fighting for for audience share right it's, yeah it's not like if, if like mission impossible came out on the same day as oppenheimer and barbie it'd be a different story yeah kind of choose it's like, it's like light and dark it's Ah, just the, per- the perfect combination. <laughs> Bar- Barbara Timer. Oh, that's funny. Well, I'm glad. I'm glad they were. I'm glad they're really good. I do want to see them. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe I'll go on Thursday because um, we still don't have the. Our, our um, just to dive into my week, our our kids are in Florida, um, with our mom, um, and and our grandma. Uh, they, they'll be gone for about ten days or so. But, um. So yeah, maybe, maybe we'll maybe we'll go Thursday. Maybe we'll go see Barbie. I don't know if Brittany would want to see Oppenheimer. I don't, I don't know, but I do. I do want to see him. I either way. I, I feel like you both are gonna love Barbie. Yeah. You know, it's gonna be great. Oppenheimer. Cool. Maybe not, but yeah. I don't know. Once you once once it once you get into it, it's really good. And yeah, it's, it's I'll, really I'll probably wait if. Yeah, because I don't think she's gonna want to see that. I'll probably wait for it to come out on like HBO Max or, or sorry, Max. Um, and go from uh, there. I did see that one in IMAX. And which was, one? Uh, Oppenheimer. OK, I think this is one of the first IMAX movies. I've yeah, seen. it was it was it was shot in like 7K or something ridiculous, like 17K or something. Yeah, which I don't it, even know it, what that means at this point. But well, it looks it looked beautiful and it sounded it sounded like like a nuclear bomb had been dropped on us in the theater because it was just so incredibly loud. In, cool. a, in a cool way, like in a like very immersive kind of 4D type of way. Yeah. Yeah. So strongly recommend. Sweet. Well, glad, yeah, again, glad, glad they were both good. I, I, yeah. I mean, they both, I mean, IGN gave it a 10 and I think they gave Barbie a 9. So both super excellent movies. So that's awesome. Cool. Well, I didn't really do much. Um, this week, uh, we, Brittany and I did. We did go. We did go out on Friday. We went to like our local bar and stuff that had like has like pool tables and stuff like that and mm-hmm. um, hung out there. And 
Uh, got a little bit too messed up. <laughs> oh man, really? Ah, well, we it's one of those things where we we got there. We're like, all right, we should eat. And, and we did after after about an hour, we got like some um, like they had this restaurant has some really good like fried pickles and we got that and like some some tater tots. Yeah. And then we were, we ordered some wings when we got them to go. But then we got back to the house. We're like, no, wait, we, we still got some some stuff in the fridge. Let's let's continue. Let's let's keep it rolling. And I think we were up to like 3 a.m. or something. You guys need to eat food, man. You guys just get a burger or something. Just... We do it every single time. I don't know why. Oh, it's like, oh, we'll get wings. Yeah. Gonna get wings. We, well, we got wings and we took them home. We just didn't eat them immediately. We actually, we didn't eat them at all. We woke up the next day and we're like, so damn. No problem. You, got, you can't get it to go. You got to eat it there. <laughs> but they were delicious, though, even the next day. <laughs> but yeah, that, that was pretty much our weekend. Um, just kind of hung out on Saturday. Made some burgers and stuff. Uh... And then, and then Sunday played a lot of uh, played a lot of Pikmin. A lot of Pikmin. But Nick, I'm I'm excited for GalaxyCon on uh on yeah, Saturday. This weekend. Yeah. yeah, yeah. This this weekend. This weekend. Sorry, I, I always say next weekend when I'm talking about this. Weekend. <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, I don't know if Antoine's coming because he didn't get his tickets and it's completely sold out. Because <laughs> I even I, I told him I was like, dude, you need to buy your tickets. Like they're gonna be sold out. And it's like I don't I don't know if you can buy them by the door or not. And then sure enough, like Saturday, we're looking at it and I was like, dude, they're sold out. <laughs> and then I <laughs> and then I called them today. Or I called GalaxyCon today and they were they're like, no, if they're sold out online, we're not selling them at the door. Okay. So, well, you can always try to get them on like Facebook Marketplace or something. Yeah, that uh, Brittany was looking at that and I said, well, maybe maybe like people will be selling them outside the venue. You're probably going to pay some extra cash for them. Yeah, uh, so I, I don't know if he's coming with us or not, because. Mm-hmm. I know we're probably you, you, all of us are going to go off Friday. I'm um, going to eat some dinner. So I don't know if he's coming or not, but I'll, I'll let you know. Um, yeah, yeah, just let me know. Either way. Because his son lives in, in Raleigh, too, so he could always hang out. He, his son was going to go, but I mean, he could always hang out with him or something. But yeah. Uh, but yeah, Nick, you want to you want to dive into uh talk about some Pikmin? I do want to talk about Pikmin. OK, sweet. I really do. How, how many hours have you put in it? post demo uh my my play t- i think my play time was like 17 hours oh my god you played a lot it, this weekend that's including the demo so whatever like because it, it just it it counts it from when you started the demo okay um, i did i'd finished it you finished the game yeah well there's, oh my there's, god. An, extensive, there's an extensive post game okay but I, I i got all the collectibles in in the areas like I, I, I 100% of each of the, yeah. each of the areas up until the, the last one. And then there's more to do essentially after that, I'm not trying to get too spoilery, but, um, that's, that's what I'm doing now is doing the post game stuff. Which okay. Feels kind of like an extension of the main story, but, okay. but credits rolled. So, uh, God, yeah. I thought, see, I thought this game was a lot longer than that. Well, I, I, I rolled like I rolled credits at about 17 hours, 17 hours. So okay. Pretty, pretty long and it's pretty long you could like i bet you could mainline it in eight hours if you didn't go for 100 percent in each area yeah but it's i mean it all depends on how you play yeah but yeah I, I think i i just uh because i haven't played any today but yeah i 100 the, the very first area and then i think i'm at like 60 percent on the th- second area and i haven't gotten to the third area area yet but okay. Yeah, I, I mean, I love it so far. I, I think uh, I haven't you know, I haven't seen all the Pikmin. Uh, I think I've got I think I got water, electric, fire, and and then ice. Um, so I know there's quite a few that I haven't gone to, but yeah, I mean, I'm loving loving the environments. Like it's a beautiful game. Um, see, seeing all like collecting all the Nintendo like Game Boys and stuff is super cool to see those pop up. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, as far as like, and I haven't played a regular P- Pikmin game in so long. I don't know entirely what's new outside of like Ochi, the, the dog. Because um, yeah. you because you said the sub level stuff was in three, right? Uh, I was in Pikmin 2. It was in Pikmin 2. Yeah, OK, there's no no sub levels in three. OK, yeah. So. I, pl- I played two right before this and I played I played three back in 2014, so it's been eight years and some change something like that yeah uh 
But just just right off the bat, like Pikmin Four is such an incredible improvement over Pikmin Two. I think the caves are so much better in in Pikmin Four. They're a lot more varied and have kind of like better movement throughout the cave. Like better, how do I say this? Like uh, more complicated structures. Yeah. In the caves compared to Pikmin Two, in my opinion, and then yeah, like Ochi's new. All the ability upgrades, all of Ochi's upgrades, those are all new to the game. All the side quests that you get from the um, from like the rescue core and every everyone else that you rescue in the game, like all that stuff is new. Like even in Pikmin Three, I'm pretty sure there weren't side quests, yeah, or any other like any other differing objectives aside from the main goal. So there's there's a lot a lot to chew on in this game, whether you're going for you know, 100% completion, trying to get all the treasures, or if you're just trying to mainline it, like there's there's a ton to do, and there's a lot of areas too. Does it does it get a little bit more challenging as far as like enemies go? Because I mean, I've had some Pikmin die, but I've not, I haven't I haven't suffered any catastrophic losses yet. And that that's the thing with this game too is like if you do suffer those losses, you can always rewind. This is true, yeah. So, and I have I've done that once well, or twice. Yeah, I mean, and I, I really don't call I don't really call it catastrophic. I mean, I was down in like a sub level and you, know, you only get a limited amount. You can't bring sometimes you can't bring your whole crew in. Um, so I only, only had a little bit of amount, a limited amount. And I was fighting one of the enemies that can blow the Pikmin away and it blew it off the edge. And it was like, you suffered too many, too many red Pikmin losses. You have to restart. So I just restarted, restarted from the, um, the sub level that you're on, which is nice that you don't have to restart the whole thing. And. I think the game really appreciates your time. Uh, and I know, I know we talk a lot of that about that with Nintendo games here of late, but it really it really does like just some of the um, I mean, when, when you're when you're building, you know, bridges and stuff like that, the fact that you can just throw your Pikmin and if you don't, ha let's say it takes 50. Was it or or whatever, whatever the, the um, currency is, you if you don't have 50 Pikmin, you throw 30 at it. 30 will go and go to your ship and collect it. And then 20 of them will go back to the ship and collect the, the other hat, like the other yeah. portion. So it's, it's really awesome like that. And then like the, the, the abilities you get um, from the, uh, specifically from like the, the science guy where you can get like the whistle where it'll call him back. If there's any idle Pikmin around in the area. Cause like the whole point of the game is just cool. kind of spreading yeah, out. Man. Yeah. Just yeah. Organizing and spreading out your Pikmin and every, everybody's got a job to do. And the fact that you get like the whistle where if there's any idle Pikmin, it'll bring them right to you. Um, or if there's some that are trapped out in the, the world, because sometimes like the one Pikmin that's missing, you're like, I have to find it. You do the whistle where it calls them back to the ship. It solves that problem for you. And you get you get that pretty quickly. So, yeah, I really like that about it. Yeah, there's a bunch of cool upgrades, like even just like movement speed increases. Yeah, <laughs> that's a good upgrade as well. Like. I don't know. There's a ton of quality of life stuff in this game. Like even even things as simple as the game telling you when something is done building. Like oh, you're yeah. going to finish this over there. It's like oh, great. Yeah. Like, and I then you call them back to your call back. them back. Yeah. Yeah. So there's just a ton. Like I don't know. It feels like they've improved on everything. Yeah. And then and then have an Ochi like be able to do a specific sense. So if you're like oh, I want to find you know, some treasure or if I want to find a Pikmin variety or whatever it is, you can do that. And because there was I think I was at I was in the first area and I was at 99 percent. And I was like, man, I know exactly which one you look for. I was like, man, where is this? And I used I used this ability. You took me right to the spot where it was like a, it was like a dig. And you like you otherwise you could not see it uh, unless you were to just happen to walk over. And it says like a to dig or something like that. So I did that and I, I got it. I was like, man, that, this really smart so yeah 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 they don't want you to like wait around too long which is really cool like yeah they, yeah, they really respect your time in this game which is uh sometimes a difficult thing to find yeah in games today so the the only the only problem i have with that statement is all of the text there's a lot of text like even just even just going into like the like talking to the scientists to upgrade your upgrade your equipment like he has a little quip that he says every single time before you upgrade yeah same for upgrading ochi or training ochi it's like 
do you really need to have this text every time? Like, I get it. I get yeah. it. And then like, when, you're out, <laughs> when you're out in battle and one of your Pikmin gets caught on fire or one of your Pikmin falls in the water, it's like, oh, your Pikmin's in the water. Like, yeah, yeah, it's like, I see it. I see it. I, I, I hear it. him screaming. <laughs> so, like, it's that kind of stuff that it d- makes me believe that this game is definitely geared towards, like, to newcomers to gaming or to younger yeah. younger audience is i don't know i wish you could turn some of that off but yeah and and, and it may be kind of hard to do because at least like for the most part you can skip every single cutscene, like going you know flying from area to area i kind of wish like especially especially in like tears of the kingdom there's just so many cutscenes between like finding a shrine you know, yeah. entering the shrine, like if you could just go into the menu and say, all right, turn off cutscenes for shrines, this and this and this, that would be really nice. I know a lot of games don't do that. Um, but when you're, I mean, uh, I can't remember his name, but whenever you're, it's talking about Tears of the Kingdom, whenever you're doing like, doing the Korok upgrade, um, you have to watch the dance every single time and you can't skip it. Really annoying. So I'm glad you can skip stuff in this game as far as yeah. as far as cutscenes go. It, it needs to be like the original GBA Fire Emblem where you can like individually turn off combat anima- animations for certain characters. Yeah, yeah. Turn them off for the for the clerics or the dancers, things like that. I wish you could kind of selectively turn off text or, or certain communications. Yeah, that'd be cool. Before. Yeah. Luckily, it's not like a ton of text. It's not like, you know, no, it's not a, overbearing. Yeah, it's not like an RPG or something, but no. it still can get a little, get a little annoying. But yeah, I, I love it. I love, um, I love all the ri- variety in the in the sub areas. Uh, I love the. So far, I've only seen two, but it's like the the. Well, I guess there's. No, I think it's two, right? It's the um when you start getting introduced to the the Dandori. Mm-hmm. Um. And you go in there and he's like, oh, well, you have to you have to collect all the. I don't know, the oh, yeah, the stuff and it, I can't remember what, what what is it? Um, it's not the ore stuff. I think it's the. What's the what's the what's currency the sp- to up- upgrade your ship? Uh, Sparklium, Sparklium, I think it's maybe that I'm not just like a an arbitrary goal of like you get you need 200 blank. Yeah. Points to gotcha. OK, to get bronze. But yeah, you start out with like five Pikmin and you have to strategically kind of go around the map to get more. And then there's also just tons of stuff like, you know, it's like, all right, well, am I going to spend two minutes destroying this wall or maybe I can take the long way around or something like that? That's really cool. Um, and then they have like the versus battle, which I think you can do that like in regular multiplayer, too. Mm-hmm. Um, that one's cool. I don't like the fact that it cuts your screen in half. I think that's yeah, really annoying. That's, that's a weird choice because I'm never looking at the right side of the screen. I don't yeah, know what they're doing. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just doing, doing me, man. Yeah, I wish they, yeah, if they would just give you the normal screen, you could easily see it because the field of view is pretty large. So you could see, oh, well, there's a, you know, there's they're taking the golden strawberry or whatever. Like, like, let me go steal it. Like I can do that and. Yeah, that's that was that was a, a weird choice they did, but um, still still fun, still different. But yeah, I'm, I'm I'm loving it so far. Yeah, it's really great. And to answer your question on difficulty, I don't think it gets that much more difficult. OK, I mean, that's fine, especially when you're upgrading Yochi and making him more powerful. Oh, he's he's ridiculous. I got him at like 100, 100 Pikmin, so he can just pretty much pull anything. Oh, my God. Mine's at mine's at 20. Yeah, I, I went yeah. I went immediately into into like. Yeah, the strength, and then I've I'm started to upgrade his attacks a little bit, so he's a little bit stronger. But okay. yeah, yeah, I, I mainly did the bash. Like the, okay. The, the yeah, where we go? The, the yeah, I think it's called the bash. Uh, that one's really good too. Just, yeah, and then like we all your Pikmin onto them. Yeah, and then the, yeah, having having the Pikmin ride on you at all times, like that's really convenient, and being able to just send specific Pikmin out. I mean, I'm sure that's in the other games too, but. All really, all of really cool stuff. Yeah, but yeah, I'm I'm liking it. Nice, glad you're loving it. Um, I'll just I'll just finish up what I've been playing. I said I wasn't playing any more Halo last week. I kind of got back into it this week. I, I figure out what the problem was. So I, I normally keep my Xbox in like standby mode, and I think it was causing some sort of issue with specifically with Halo because I was I was still getting that weird 
rubber band, like rubber banding. Um, again, not, I know we had back, back when Halo first came out, it was like, I was like, what is this? What is this garbage? And people were like, man is introduced to lag. I was like, no, this is not lag. Like this is, this is like rubber banding. It's, it's a different thing. It's, yeah. it's, it's the same thing, but it's, it's different. And, and if you play games long enough, you, you know, the difference. And I, I kept getting it and I just I, I wasn't I'm not wasn't sure why. So I was like, well, maybe let's I went to the Xbox settings, you know, I, uh, the connection was like perfect. So I was like, well, maybe let's turn off. Let me switch it from standby mode to just regular. Like when it turns off, it turns off and that's it. Mm -hmm. I did that and then it's worked. It worked just fine. So that's so weird. I don't know if I, I, I just got lucky or if that was actually a problem because I I tried looking it up online and, and, and nothing was helpful. So. Um, I, evidently, I was able to, to fix it myself, but um, so yeah, weird. it was fun Just playing, playing some Halo. Now you're liking it again. Yeah, I mean, that rubber band, it was really annoying because, I mean, you get like two or three matches in and, it, you know, it messes with your with your skill, with your shooting. And then you're losing and it's and then it's not fun. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy how that happens. Yeah, but yeah, uh, play that a little bit. Um, pretty fun. Uh, I still haven't, I have not picked up the premium battle pass yet. I don't know if I will this time. Um, That's fair. I don't know. But anyways, uh, and then the last game I played, I, I, I picked up Attack on Titan 2, the video game. All that. <laughs> saw that. Yeah. It was on sale for like 30 bucks. And it was like the 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 complete edition with like all the DLC and stuff like that. Um, so much like I thought this would be like season two Attack on Titan, but it's much like the Dragon Ball games where they always just rehash the same like Dragon Ball story over and over again. So you start you start like right out of like training um, yeah. in the show for those who are familiar with it. But um, once I got used to the controls, because there, there's kind of a lot going on when you're when you're swinging around the city and stuff. Um, but once you get the controls down, because you also get you don't necessarily get control of them, but you do get like four companions at all times for, for the most part. So you can, you know, you can send, you know, Connie, he's all right. You focus on his legs, you know, Mikasa, you do arms and then you'll go in for the kill. Um, so, so you have a little bit of control and there's there's some other abilities that they have, um, like like you have a like a smoke grenade or a flash grenade that you can throw down. Um, but yeah, like zipping through the city. Um, on the ODM gear, it's super fun and it feels really good. Does it feel like Spider-Man a little bit? It does, because there's really not much limitations when it comes like you can pretty much activate it anywhere mm -hmm. you want to. Now, the interesting thing is they they do follow the show with like the gas and stuff like that and the blades. So when you're when you're on um, when you're in the map or whatever, you can you can activate um, certain supply points where you can go in and, and refresh your, your heels and refresh your blades and your and your gas and stuff like that. Uh, but if you get caught out in the, you know, when you're fighting two or three Titans and you run out, you, you're you not flying anywhere. So it's, it can be... Oh, dang, it's actually kind of scary. Yeah, it's, it actually, yeah. When, especially because, like, at some point, um, they will lock onto you and, like, the, the screen will turn, like, gray and the Titan will turn red and they just kind of bum rush you. Uh, and you could get away pretty easily, but they can grab you. And there's like a there's like a split hair second where you can uh, like I think it's a you tap on a and he'll do like the Levi thing where he like circles around their arms and cuts them up real good. Yeah, it's really it's really cool. Um, yeah, so far, just kind of following the story. You, pl you play as like a nameless character. Like I was going to ask, but it's different. It, it's kind of cool because they give you a different perspective on what happens in the show. Um. So that's kind of cool. And you you do interact with, you know, with with Aaron and, and all the, you know, all the main characters and stuff like that and build a relationship with them. And, you know, as you build the relationships, you know, you get more abilities and stuff like that. So it's a lot deeper than I thought it was going to be. Yeah, it sounds pretty deep. Um, God, it sounds interesting. <laughs> it, it does do the gamey thing where like one Titan will come in. And it's like a really tall Titan and they have like this green like armor on them and you have to kind of chip away at it to. Okay you know, to, to, to get it down. Um, you got to vary it up a little bit. You gotta, yeah, you got you to gotta vary it up a little. You always got to add, like, your your armored, you know, people in there. Uh, I haven't fought any, um, like, main titans yet 
or whatever, like the nine. Uh, but so far, I'm liking it, man. I, I liked it a lot more than I thought I was. Yeah, did you get it on Xbox? I did, yeah. So you can you can download away. <laughs> it's pretty cool. It's I, I like it, and I think it has co-op too. Oh, it does. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how that works or how that looks. You know, I don't know if it's just like a split screen or I'm, I'm sure it is. But how, how does it run? Pretty. I mean, it's it's a Bandai Namco like you know, license game, so it's got some jank to it. Is it like thirty frames? It, it, it's probably thirty. It will. Probably thirty. Yeah, it's it's got to be thirty. I don't. I don't know. Maybe it's six. I don't. I don't know. It, it runs really good. I I didn't really have much, much hiccuping. Okay. Um. But I mean, there's because there's a lot going on screen. I mean, you might have six or seven titans on the screen plus all of your, all of your whatever comrades, allies, or whatever. Um. But yeah, a lot a lot more fun than I thought it was going to be. I, I like I was I saw it on sale and I was like, mm. and then I read the reviews that people were like, blown away about how you know how good it was then you know what's the what was expected i think it's like 70 something Pretty. so not not terrible not not great but not terrible and i think if you're a fan of the show 75 75 that, yeah it's like right it's it's kind of like the typical you know outside of like dark soul stuff you know a lot of the licensed bandai namco stuff isn't amazing but like like dragon ball kakarot I love that game. Yeah, I can I can see that that game is not amazing, and that's that's okay. You know, I mean, every every game that you play doesn't have to be a, you know, eighty five and up. Yeah, there's you can get a seventy three. Yeah, you can you can you can find some enjoyment in some stuff. So yeah, I, I think it's really cool. Nice man. So try try you should try it out. <laughs> um, and that is pretty much all I've been playing. Nice, and I. Just real quick, I, I finished up Dredge. Uh, Heck yeah. Very great, very great game. Man. I just, I loved the fishing in that game and and just all the upgrades you can do to your ship or to your, yeah, to your, uh, to your ship and your rig and your inventory and all the Resident Evil style uh, inventory management that's going on there. Like, yeah. I don't know, just, it scratched a lot of itches. And it did, yeah. The, the story was, it was like just just vague enough to to be enticing. But yeah. Not too vague where you don't understand what's going on. Yeah, it's 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 engaging enough to where you want to know what the heck is going on, but also You're not like you're not completely lost. Yeah, you're not lost and you're not constantly getting like lore dumped and stuff like that. Like yeah. the main the main point of the game is like fishing, because there's a ton of different, you know, fish. Um yeah, I can't. I can't wait for the DLC. I don't. I don't know what exactly they're going to do. Like, if it's going to be like a, I mean, they said it's a, a paid story expansion. So I'm, you know, wondering what that's going how that game ends. I don't know like. where they would go with that. But maybe, maybe it's something they just kind of. A lot of games will will sprinkle in, like especially Dark Souls. Like they'll just kind of tuck in a side. Inject yeah, inject it somewhere. Um, now, did you do both endings? I did. Yeah. I, yeah, okay, I did yes, both. Okay. Which one did you do first? Uh, I guess non-spoiler. I it's not spoilery, but think I got the good ending first. Oh, okay, I did the bad first. Yeah, and I just blindly <laughs> went with it and did the bad one. So. Yeah, I think I, I think I did the good one, and then I was like, and I googled it and I saw there was multiple endings, so I was like, all right, well, let me let me do the bad ending. But yeah, yeah great great game. I the game is game is amazing. Um, I'm really, I'm really hoping that Dave the Diver comes out and switched to him because I've seen some videos of that and that looks incredible. Pretty good. And Pretty good, man. yeah, I, I don't know. They don't, they don't have a release date for that, right? No, I think they just said later this year. Okay. But it, I mean, it'll be a hit once it comes out on Switch. Oh yeah, for sure, for sure. And it's getting like Sorry, really great reviews. Yeah. Um, anything else you've been playing? I think that's it. Sweet. Well, let's uh, let's go into the news real quick and then we will do we will end it with uh, some Tears of the Kingdom talk. Our final final thought. final discussion. Uh, we're going to talk a lot about it, but uh, final discussion, complete spoilers. Well, yeah. uh, I'll, I'll do another spoiler um, you know, announcement before before we get into it. But, you know, if we spoil something at right at the beginning of it, you know, we want to give you guys the heads up. But uh, yeah, it's our final discussion until probably probably game of the year or or if DLC drops soon, so we'll see. Yeah. 
Uh, but that being said, we'll, we'll dive into uh, into the news and our, 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 our favorite Nintendo uh, leaker, leaker uh, Mr. Jeff Grubb, um, announced um, on his on his podcast, Last of the Nintendogs. Kind of just brought up uh, that Metro Prime 2 is coming soon. You know, I didn't give really a firm release date. Uh, he did say it was coming out this year. Um, he did. He did not bet any sort of uh, hair follicles on the line for this one. <laughs> But he sounded pretty confident. I, I did. I did watch the the clip. Um, he sounded pretty confident. And then he also snuck in something about Zelda, where he said something would not necessarily come out, but something he thinks is going to get announced that is not Tears of the Kingdom related. What do you think that would be? Yeah, I, I, I'm not going to say Twilight Princess and Wind Waker because I'm I'm tired of saying it. But I, I think we could get a new 2D Zelda, like a completely new one from like Grezzo. Like a like a like a brand new one or like a remake. Like a brand new one. That would be great. I would I would love that. I would love a a, like, a 2D like Zelda. Launching, you know, early 2024. Yeah. Kind of like a smaller release, but. Yeah, and they could they could announce it at the Nintendo like the September Direct, assume, yeah. assuming there is one. Which I think I think Metroid Prime Two would be there. Shadow dropped. Yeah, because like that, it feels like that's Nintendo's cadence as of late is just yeah. a shadow drop. Which I, I would be fine with because I, I do want that game physical and that's, you know, Starfield time. So I think I'm good with waiting like a month or so um, to let Starfield, you know, do its thing. Um, but yeah, 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 I would love it. I love it. I mean, as much as I would love the Twilight Princess Wind Waker stuff like like you, I'm sick of talking about it. Um, we know it's going to come eventually. We'll, we'll get something new, you know, in regards to that. But I would love a 2D Zelda. That would be that would be awesome. Yeah. And, and let me just ask you, just, let's just. If if Twilight Princess and Wind Waker were to get announced and released yeah. this year, would you play both of them? Would you play through them both? Like if they get announced as like a like a dual pack? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Let's say they both come out at the same time in a dual pack. I would definitely play it, it's been so long since I've played either of those games. Um I think I think Yeah, I think it's just been so long since I've played those games to, to completion. Uh I think I'd be okay with playing with them. I, I would probably play Wind Waker first, just because I think I, I don't think I beat the Wind Waker one on Wii U. I definitely did the Twilight Princess one. Uh, so I think I would hit Wind Waker first just to see how that looks because that that game just looks just, it looks incredible. Um, so I'd probably beat that one to completion, and then I don't know if I would immediately jump into Twilight Princess because that may just be Zelda overload. Um, yeah, but I, I would definitely play it like day one for sure. Yeah, I think out of the two, I would play Wind Waker, but I feel like I've played that game so many times. Yeah, in Twilight Princess, yeah, I played on the Wii U back in 2016. I I would hope that that game got like would get a better visual treatment this time around because it was still like a little, still a little ugly on the Wii. U. What Twilight Princess? Yeah, Twilight Princess. Yeah, just, I mean, just with the art style. And yeah, that. it's just the it's just the art style. I think. I mean, they could they could obviously do a little bit of work. Now we're talking about it do you do you think they would actually do a dual pack or do you think these are getting released separately like no. at this full point, price at this point if if pikmin one and two are coming out and in, in a dual pack at 50 bucks I, they wouldn't put wind waker and todd princess hd yeah. together for 60 it's it just just what do you think they do them if they if they just do the ports from with wii u you know, and maybe and maybe they'll do a little bit of work to them. I don't I don't know. Do you think they would come out like a budget price, like 40, like Metroid Prime? Or do you, or do you think they're going to be full 60? I think they would be full because like a game like. Well, no, I was thinking of Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze, but that was an original game on Wii U. Yeah. Cause that, this would be the third maybe, time they've been released. Maybe, so yeah, maybe they would be maybe they'd be budget at 40 or 50. You know, I'll, I'll give you Skyward Sword, you know, at 60 because that game was 11 years or something yeah post so like cool GameCube and Wii game like gamecube and gamecube slash Wii games so those they, yeah they're pretty old i don't know yeah maybe 40 for each other i think then... i mean 
you you know me i'll I'll buy them at 60 because i'm crazy but and, and i know a lot of people would just because it's zelda but yeah i would prefer it to be 40 or just do a dual pack like dual pack like 70 maybe sure 30 yeah. 35 dollars a game yeah I, I don't know man it's it's so hard it's so hard to figure out what they would do yeah I mean, either way, when they put the, when they when they announce it finally, like I'm I'm gonna be hyped up, but still, yeah. they just need to they need to announce these and then announce Xenoblade Chronicles X. They can put a bow on the Wii U and call it a day because I think that's that's it. That's everything, right? Like from Star Fox Zero, rest in peace. Yeah. Do we need it? I, I like it. Yeah, I didn't I didn't play that one. Um. Yeah, like you said, I would prefer a Zelda 2 just or a Zelda, a 2D Zelda um, to come out like spring of next year. That would be that'd be great. And, and, you know, a launch title for the Switch 2. Oh, yes. Yeah, so Boom. Also there you go. In spring. Yeah, there <laughs> <it>. <laughs> um, Nick, did you uh, did you watch the Spider-Man 2 trailer? I did. It was, it was looks pretty like, awesome. Man, mm, it, it, it looks it, good. It's calling. It's calling. Yeah. And, and the, the the console itself and the controller looks really really cool. Yeah, it's pretty sweet, and, and it's cool they have like the face plates. Yeah, that you can buy too, so you don't have to buy a whole new console for a special edition. Yeah, that that is that is really cool. I'm sure I'm sure that I'm sure they probably thought about that, and they're like, you know what, we make so many special editions, like it just makes sense. So, yeah, get get so many people just buying those because they're probably what thirty bucks or something, forty bucks for those plates. So yeah, I think I think around that price, maybe a little bit pricier but and then i'm sure they'll have the, the controller separate right for 70 or 80 bucks so that's cool yeah. and those launch i think september 1st so oh wow okay oh yeah okay for starfield yeah because the game comes out what october 20th uh yeah 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 because that's i think the same day as super mario wonder yeah jeez that'll be fun <laughs> I, yeah i want to play spider-man it, it looks really good it does yeah the I don't even know what to say about it, but it just looks it looks incredible. I mean, it looks like a really great Spider-Man story. Insomniac is yeah, an insane developer. I, I don't know how they pump out so many games and have them all be like super high quality, but yeah, man, they're like a top tier developer. Yeah, I need I need to play Miles first. I yeah, think that's one thing I want to do before before it comes out. Yeah, because I, I think I think the game's pretty pretty short compared to regular spider-man and I, I wouldn't i don't think i would 100 percent it like i did um base spider-man but yeah cool um nick did you did you look at the leaks for the the uh the playstation q yeah it looks looks like garbage <laughs> it's like just such such dookie it's just so bad i mean the leaks uh, unlike the um well let me pause for a second did, did you see the the nintendo switch 2 quote-unquote leak yeah. That that I, that random Twitter guy was like saying was real, and he's like, "It's coming tomorrow." Announcement tomorrow. And then nothing, nothing showed up, of course. So, the actual UI I really liked the the concept that he made, um, with like the game. Did you see like the video of it, like the of like the Switch yeah. card going in, and then it like pops into the screen? Like I thought the U the UI was neat, but the control, like the controller, looked really stupid. See, I'm I'm almost the opposite. I thought the UI was was there was too much going on and it yeah. needed to be more snappy and instantaneous. Okay. That that switching over was slower than the switch, so it didn't make sense to have. Are, are you talking about from it from like it switching when, from when, when it was docked? Yeah, like like going into the pipe. Well, that that was slow. Yeah, that was that was too slow. But I'm talking about when they when they inserted the um the switch card, like the the game card into it, and then it it, it, it popped down. Like I, I thought that was kind of cool. Um, I, don't know. I, I thought the controllers looked a little bit more comfy and, and from the looks of it, it looked like you could adjust where the joy cons were sitting it, yeah it did cool idea, but it but but it's it's always so funny with these like mock-up builds or like these guess you know whatever you want to call it um they're always so round like, everything is so round do you expect things to look like that in reality <laughs> no <laughs> Although maybe maybe if stuff was more round, it'd be more comfortable. I don't know. But I, yeah, I mean that's definitely the case for controllers. 
Yeah. Like if, it, if the if the if the Joy-Con was like a little bit rounder, then you could grip it. Or or if it just had like grips on the side. I mean, you have a you have like the satisfy grip or whatever yeah. it's called, like that. Kind of like something like that, but just the actual controller is that size. Yeah, that'd be cool. I don't know. I I wanted to believe it just because I want the Switch 2 to be announced. Yeah. But I was too skeptical. Yeah, there's. I was like, there, there's no way they're announcing this thing in July. No. But I don't know. Anyways, like yeah, the, uh, the PlayStation Q, it continues to look ridiculous. Um, really interested in the price. Then that's that's the thing is like the, the screen, like the OLED screen is probably gonna be really nice. Um, you know, in game wise, they could maybe they could maybe do some cool things with it. Probably not, but they could like, you know, like the Wii U. Um, but I, I think it's gonna be like 300 bucks. I really do. Yeah, 250, 300. I mean, if this thing comes out in this, as much as a switch, I mean, that's that's just you that you can't take it out of your house. Like, come on. That's just that Sony greed, man. Like, like getting to the Apple levels of absurdity with that their Hubert, prices. That Hubert's coming out. Yeah, e- even two hundred bucks. I'm like, that's that's still kind of pushing it. Like one fifty, okay. But yeah, it's like the only use case I could see is if someone has a family that really likes watching TV, and they only have like. Are, are, and they typically game in the living room or something like that. And then you just play it on your on your handheld. Oh, what's That's up, Kaylee? Really <laughs> Kaylee, what's up? In Florida? Down in Florida. But yeah, that's that's really the only use case is if someone was like in a big family or something and they wanted to watch TV. I don't know. But how like how often like did that happen? Were you ever in a scenario where you're playing the Wii U and somebody wants to watch TV and you're like, oh, let me switch it to the tablet and play once, maybe? No, if, if anything, I would bring my Wii U around and just plug it up and play on my Wii U. Yeah. Had. But I never had to switch from the TV because someone wanted to play. I've done that with the Switch. Yeah. But that's a completely different thing than the PSQ. Or whatever it's called. Yeah, Pro- Project Q. Yeah. Project Q. I don't know. It, it looks crazy. Um, but I'm I'm curious to to see what that pricing is. But yeah, it it can't be more than three hundred. And if it's at three hundred, that's ridiculous. Yeah, I'm thinking three hundred. Two nine two ninety nine is, is what it'll be. It's because of the OLED screen. Yeah, and it's got haptic feedback. I mean, it's it's got all the features of the controller. With with a eight inch LCD screen, so just I don't know, just release release like a a controller with like a attachable phone thing, like phone or iPad grip that you can just attach your iPad and stream it. Like it's, I mean they have they have the they have those, right? the backbone that's PlayStation branded. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what they're doing then. I don't know. All right, well let's um that's the end of the news and that was kind of the length of a normal podcast so um if you guys are not sticking around for it i don't know i may i may i may divvy it up yeah we might need to split it up two episodes so um we'll have i'll have everything uploaded at the same time so we're gonna have our normal a normal podcast that we just that we just went through and then we'll have our bonus cast with our with our zelda so uh definitely definitely check that out We're, we're fully spoiling um everything Tears of the Kingdom related. Um, so we will see you guys in the uh, in that episode. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank y'all so much for watching this video. I really appreciate it. Consider subscribing to the channel. I'll let YouTube algorithm pick one of my videos below for you guys to watch. Give it a give it a click, and I hope you enjoy. And I will see you in the next video.